Hi everyone. One of the really awesome things about sessions is that you can share your availability and let others book a meeting time with you. This means that you don't need a third-party app for scheduling, you can do it right here in sessions. Let's take a look at how it works. Go to book me on the main menu. From here you can create multiple booking pages for different types of meetings. Click on new booking page to get started. You'll see a menu on the left hand side of your screen. We'll work our way through all the different steps. First up, there's the general settings. Give your booking page a name, let's call this one, discovery call. And then make sure that you are happy with the URL, it's good to choose something that's easy to remember and share. Now, let's add a brief description to our booking page. While optional, this is a great chance to provide additional context for your participants. Then, set your session duration. You can choose one of the standard options or create a custom duration. I'm going to go for the 30 minute option. Feel free to explore additional duration if you need more time for certain sessions. Email reminders lets you choose how long in advance you and your participants will get reminder emails. In this case, let's set it at 45 minutes. If you wish to add an extra reminder or two, you can click add reminder. Lastly, decide whether you want participants to be allowed to bring additional guests or not. Let's move on to the scheduling options. Under availability, choose your time zone from the drop down menu. Availability period lets you choose if this booking page will only be valid for a certain period of time, let's say for one month or from specific dates like 10 to 20th January or indefinitely. I'm planning on using this booking page for a long time, so I'm going to choose indefinite. Then decide if you want to be available from the get go. I'm OK with that, so I'm going to choose starting from today. Scheduling window defines how far in advance people can book you. I'm going to set it to 30 days so they can choose any time and date that suits them within the next 30 days. Now, let's set up our schedule. If you haven't done so already, you should sync your calendar with sessions. Google, Outlook and iCalendar are supported and you are welcome to sync more than one calendar. This is so that your bookings can match up with your availability and you can avoid double bookings. Let's click on go to calendar and you'll see that my Google Calendar is already synced. So now when someone books a time with me, it'll automatically show up in my calendar. Perfect. Let's go back to book me schedule. Click on this drop down and decide whether you want to stick to working hours no weekends, or set a new custom schedule. For this tutorial, let's set up a new custom schedule. Click on the button, set the days and times that you'll be available, and save it as a new schedule. Nice! Now let's move to limits to set some restrictions on bookings. If you often have back-to-back -back bookings, I suggest adding some buffers before and after your meetings. This will give you those much-needed little breaks to wrap up, prep, or simply have a coffee. You can also set start time increments, which has to do with the frequency of available time slots. For example, if you set it to 60 minutes, someone will be able to book you at 8 am or 9 am or 10 am, so, there will be an available slot every 60 minutes. Guest can't book a session within, this defines how far in advance a booking can be made. For example, if set to 24 hours, people cannot book an appointment less than 24 hours before the scheduled start time. Maximum allowed sessions per day for this type of booking, from here you can limit the number of booked sessions you want to take per day. As you can see, there's quite a lot of detail here, but it gives you a nice level of control over your bookings, you really can fine tune them to suit your needs. Now, let's add an agenda to our booking. This is really useful if you're expecting to have the same type of meeting over and over again, because it allows you to map out your discussion points beforehand and add all your slides, videos, and other resources in advance. You can create an agenda for your demos or discovery calls and link it to your booking, and voila. When the time comes and you start the session, the agenda will be there with everything you need. To create a new agenda, navigate to Agendas on the main menu. Once you've done this, it's super easy to add it to a booking, just click on the drop-down menu to select it. By the way, Sessions allows you to create as many agendas as you need, and you can also share them with your team members. Moving on to form, add a form to your booking if it's important for you to collect certain information when someone books a time slot with you. Let's customize one. 
Begin by updating the form description if you would like to provide instructions or share certain information with someone when they book. You'll notice that there are some default form fields, name, email, and guests. Note that name and email are mandatory, while guests is optional. To add more form fields, click Add Field. A pop-up will appear, allowing you to choose from predefined custom fields like City, Website, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Select the ones that are relevant to your needs. If you want to create a custom field from scratch, click on Add Custom Field. Here, you can choose the type and label for the new field. Let's add a numeric type field and label it age. If you want to change the order of the fields, simply drag and drop them. And, if there's a field you no longer need, click on the delete button next to that field to remove it. Now let's explore the advanced settings to fine-tune your new booking page further. First up, access settings. Toggle on lock session if you want to approve each attendee before they join. Toggle on request guest email if you want participants without a sessions account to provide their email address when joining. This is useful if you need to send them takeaways from your meeting. Toggle on recording consent if you want to inform participants that a recording and transcript will take place. This setting is especially important if your meetings need to be GDPR compliant. Memory access lets you choose who can access the session's recording, resources, and analytics. Choose between moderator, attendees, or anyone with the link. Toggle on request passcode if you want participants to provide a passcode when joining. Let's move on to participants' permissions. These settings control what your participants will be able to do during live sessions. Choose who would you like to be able to send reactions, like raise hand or thumbs up. Options include everyone, speakers and hosts, and hosts. Also, choose who'll be able to share their screen, switch on their camera, and unmute their microphone. Toggle on hide inactive participants if you prefer not to show participants whose microphones and cameras are off. This helps maintain a nice and clean look and is especially useful during large webinars. Next up, widgets. The beauty of widgets is that you have the power to customize which widgets appear on screen, giving you full control over the participant experience. Decide whether you want participants to see the agenda, access the participant list, engage in group or private chat, participate in polls, submit questions in the Q&A, make notes, review the transcript, and more. If there are specific widgets you don't plan on using, you can easily deactivate them by toggling them off. Worried that you'll forget to press record? No problem, Sessions has some nifty automation settings in place. Toggle on Automatic Recording if you want the recording to start once the session goes live. The same goes for Automatic Transcribing, when toggled on, the transcript will automatically start. Toggle on Email Follow-up if you want the system to automatically send out an email to all invited participants once the session concludes. This is an excellent way to share resources, summaries, or next steps. For many, the recorded sessions are as crucial as the live experience. That's why Sessions lets you customize and shape your recorded content to suit your specific needs. Opt for full-sized videos if you wish for a maximized video feed size. And set your preferred view modes for different scenarios. Finally, you can create an exit page that leaves a lasting impression on your participants. Toggle on Collect Feedback if you'd like participants to rate your session and leave comments. If you want to offer participants one last opportunity to visit your website or show a special deal, activate Final Call to Action and pick the specific offer you'd like to showcase. It's finally time to bring our booking page to life by hitting the Create Booking button in the top right corner. If you want, you can allow people to book you directly from your website. Click on the Add to Website button to see the different embed options. Choose between Embed Page to add a scheduling page to your website, embed component to integrate a scheduling component into an existing page, or embed widget to add a button that opens the scheduling component in a pop-up. If you prefer sharing the link directly, click on Copy Booking Link in the top right corner. The link is now copied, and you can share it with your audience via email, social media, or any other preferred communication channel. Also, you can share your booking link with your team, similar to Round Robin. This is ideal if you are, for example, a team of people who work together on taking discovery calls or demos. 
The system will automatically distribute meetings based on each person's availability. And, that's it. We've gone through all the steps of creating a booking page that looks professional and is easy to use. And, as you can see, you can tailor it to suit your specific needs. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more sessions tips, and visit our website for the latest updates.